We want Zambians to, to know what Samanomba is all about. It signifies Zambia's independence. In Zambia, Samuria Momba is one of the most important places, young man. 187 cattle came from Namwala. I think it's just in order that such places must be remembered and must be put on the map and must be given a first lift, must be given their prominence. Uh, to put it crudely, I would say Southern Province paid for me, in my own words, I would say they paid for our independence. <laughs> It is part of the hidden truth about Zambia's struggle for independence. Unknown to many, and the journey would not be complete without mentioning the tree of the southern ground hornbill bird, popularly known to the locals as Samuria Momba. Samuria Momba, located in Wengwa, Chief Chongo's area in Monze district was a resting and breeding place for the hornbill known as momba in Tonga. In its original state, the tree is said to have had features of a fig tree, but it was not. Because of its nature and location, the tree was identified as an ideal place for secret political meetings and maneuvers of the African National Congress, ANC. Just at this place, in 1953, a general conference was held which saw the election of Harimwanga Nkumbula as president of the African National Congress, ANC, as well as Kenneth Kaunda as secretary general, replacing Bikusita Riwanika and Robinson Nawuriato, respectively. The African National Congress spread like wildfire, covering the whole country under the leadership of Hari Mwangankumbula, as the late veteran politician Daniel Munkombwe narrated to us in the year 2014. About September 30, 1953, then I was a young student um, of about 21 years, the four of us came to Monze. Monze became very famous for political agitation in the southern province generally, but that's where the general conference which elected Harimang and Kumbula replacing uh, Bigustari Wanega and uh, Kenneth Kaunda, a secretary general, replacing Robinson Nabuliato. That is where the rejuvenation of the ANC was, um, was uh, mooted. Now, from there, for five solid years, five solid years, the African National Congress and Nkumbola encompassed the whole country and uh, ANC spread. Hari Mwanga Nkumbula, born in 1916, January 15th to be precise, at a place called Mala in Namwala district of Southern Province, was a fearless man who really wanted to have the then Northern Rhodesia, now Zambia, liberated. However, Samuria Momba continued to host those strategic meetings to fight the Federation of Rhodesia and Nyansaland. This place is very important because when they met here, important decisions were arrived at. Uh, the way we had in Kaunda's time, Mulungush Rock of Authority, it was like that in those days. When they met here, very, very important decisions were arrived at. That is why when they now started fighting the colonialists, 
a view of uh, uh, federation, the federation of Rhodesia and Yansaland. They started fighting from here. Kumbula and these people didn't want the federation of uh, Rhodesia and Yansaland in the 1950s. They tried to fight that uh, battle. Unfortunately, as uh, black people, we didn't manage to stop the formation of uh, African, I mean, the Federation of uh, Rhodesia and Yansaland. It was formed in 1953. Okay, the colonial masters uh, settlers uh, government. So Samuel Mwamba has a history that even the fight against the Federation, they used to meet to try to deter, uh, to stop the colonialists to make this region as one country, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and uh, today see Malawi. So these people tried to fight the Federation just there at uh, uh, Samuel Mumba. But why hold meetings here? We needed a place where we could see someone coming from the north, the west, the east, and the south. The place itself was so attractive being so almost at a center place, central place. And it's, it's, it's on geographical setup. That is something which made it become so impo important and popular. Let us be holding our meetings here. The ANC made several attempts to clinch independence deals, but it was hard to raise money for their political maneuvers. Nkumbula and Kaunda tried several businesses, including fish selling in Namwala. They came up with fishing. Kaunda was fishing with the Atibusang here. By that time, he was the secretary. And they got the fish that they sold to enable them to raise some funds. You also decided to go and approach the explorers, the missionaries, where you have Wimpande, uh, seashells. Kumbula himself initiated with his colleagues to go and visit uh, and trade with those people. He brought those shells and cut those shells into good pieces. That's where you see Vaila, Vatonga, Valundwe, Balasama Impande when they are doing their celebrations. In memory of what happened, that was the initiative of Harimanga Kumbula. Unfortunately, the small businesses could not yield much to meet the budget of 1,000 pounds to enable them travel to Lancaster House in England. But another strategy was mooted to involve chiefs and their subjects to make contributions. Word went round the whole country to take all donations to Samuel Yamomba. One of the most important uh, uh, things that happened at Samuel Yamomba was uh, the time when now Nkumbula and his people were supposed to travel to England to go and ask the Queen of England to give them freedom because Zambia was a colon of uh, uh, the British em in the British Empire. So they met there to try and raise funds. That is one of the big things that happened at uh, Samuel Yamomba. They now wanted to raise funds so that they can send a delegation to England. And I want to say that most of those resources came from uh, animals that were put together, that were collected and sold off in order to raise the tickets on the British Overseas Airways Corporation, which is British Airways now. And most of those animals are must state. Much of those, or most of those animals, came from the southern province of Zambia. And interestingly, again, the delegation to Lancaster House to go and negotiate that independence, again, the leadership came from southern province. Uh, to put it crudely, I would say southern province paid for me. In my own words, I would say they paid for our independence. <laughs> Namwala had and still have a lot of animals. The cattle population surpasses the number of people in the district. This is why, even at that time, the area had to donate 187 cows, with 87 coming from Nkumbla's home village, Mala. 
from Mala, they have donated 87 animals. Big animals by that time. And the whole district, I think, 187. They were driven to Samuria Momba, where you hear the Samuria Momba. That's why they were kept. And that's where the meetings were being held. Those animals were bought by Emuzungu, who lived here in Mala, A.G. Jones, popularly known as Kandondo. He bought those animals and gave the uh, political party, the Anki, the money to enable them to go to England and pursue the uh, reparation of Northern Rhodesia, now Zambia. Southern province is said to have had paid more than half of the total budget to enable the team travel to England for independence negotiations. The budget which was given to us by our leaders who were in front in politics that was that time was 1,000 pounds. Out of that 1,000 pounds, 800 pounds came from this area, from the same contribution, 800 pounds. 200 pounds came from these other provinces. You know the reason why I've explained? Katutako Hanyukuma resources, Bamuima resources, Mashondo. Historically, the Monze Nico Road became very popular during the movements of donated items to Samuria Momba. Chief Hamzonde and Chief Jongo knows too well the importance of the Monze Nico Road and Samuria Momba. This uh, Monze Nico Road, in the future one might suggest to say it can even be named Independence Road here, because this was a hive of activity. It was a very, very important road during the struggle for independence. Very, very important road. So the animals could, could come from Namara, which is now even across the Kafue, which is now Itej. It was still under Namara. Now all the chiefs from there across could donate animals with their own men. Now those animals could be driven on foot using this road which you are neglecting, which most of the government, former government, former governments neglected this road. The animals were using this road, coming on a foot, to Saburia Momba, the place which was the central for people from Monze, Mapanza, Mwanajimbara, elsewhere. That was the the meeting place. The question that one would ask is, why was this place completely forgotten, purely no trace even in education books? However, the question remains unanswered, but this scenario is not sitting well with chiefs and other concerned citizens. They now want Samuel Momba to be recognized. And it, I think it's just in order that such places must be remembered and must be put on the map and must be given a facelift, must be given their prominence. Is Samuel Momba was indeed a place that was very, very prominent and I think that we need uh, that highlighted. Must be a, histori a historical place. Put something there which will be historically known that this is the big, you know, the backbone of independence of Zambia. Some historical marks should be put in Sabri Amomba without any reservation. Above all, this road has been you know, neglected for 57 years of independence now forgetting about this road, because we are now independent. It's hopeless, we don't want even to see it now. No former president 
has put all the resources, or whatever it is, even to ask those non you know, investors to help us tie this road from Monze to Nigo, which is merely 72 kilometers. Just 72 kilometers, Sunny. If you are thinking for, for, for this, some of the let us do something on the road. Let us do, do something to, you know, to honor this place. It's very important. In, in Zambia, Samuria Momba is one of the most important places, young men. We want Zambians to, to know what Samuria Momba is all about. It signifies Zambia's independence. The struggles of the Africans to break the chains of colonialism. And we are proud and we are very happy that uh, to, uh, the journey towards independence includes Samuel Mwamba. And we cannot take that out of history. Place to be a national heritage place. We have not tempered with it. Uh, customarily, we have uh, put it aside as a place that shall remind us of uh, what our forefathers did for struggle for, uh, in the struggle for independence. So we're asking government to come in full force, help us uh, put some facilities at that place. Uh, we want a museum there. We don't want that place just to be active in one time of the year. No, we want people, any time that they want to come, they can come there, they visit, they get the history. So we want the place to be recognized by government, uh, given the necessary funding, the necessary publicity, and also the security there. We want it to be, in future, we want it to be a tourist attraction. Who, whoever person comes to Zambia, all the, the, the tourists who come to Zambia, it must be a place they can also visit. Slowly, but indeed surely, Samuel Yamomba is getting recognized, especially with the new Dawn government on the driving seat. The honors now is on the historians to rewrite the history of Zambia's struggle for independence to include this important place, as leaving it out again will be a serious omission. <laughs> Yeah.